Welcome to this section dedicated to multi-carbonate fuel cells. Beneath all fuel cell technology, this is the one that reaches nowadays the biggest amount of power size and of energy produced. These tanks may lead to big power plants that were developed since now in the United States and in Korea. But how exactly this technology works? Let's go into detail. Like all fuel cells, multi-carbonate fuel cells are uh, composed by three layers, the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. In this case, electrolytes is made by uh, molten carbonates. So what is exactly is a carbonate that migrate from cathode to the anode, while externally energy is supplied to a load. If we look to the anode, we mainly have uh, hydrogen as a potential fuel that reacts with carbonate to produce steam and carbon dioxide, plus of course the mole of electrons that supply the electrical circuit outside. What is interesting is that the product of this process is not only steam but also carbon dioxide. At the same time, at the cathode electrode, we need to supply an oxidant, usually air, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reacts with oxygen that is in the air to produce carbonates. The carbonates are the um, ions that are supplied to the electrolyte so that uh, as an overall um, balance, carbon dioxide is consumed at the anode, uh, at the cathode and produced at the anode. Looking to the off gases, at the anode we have steam and carbon dioxide plus a small amount of hydrogen because like in all technology of fuel cells, usually not all the hydrogen and the fuel that is supplied, it is consumed and we may have a small amount of unreacted hydrogen in the off gases. At the same way, we may have a similar um, process at the oxygen electrode, so at the cathode, where in the exhaust we theoretically may have only nitrogen that is an inert to the system, but usually we also have an amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen that does not react uh, and it may be found in the off gases. So the overall, the two different reactions, anode and cathode, are hydrogen that reacts with carbonates to produce steam and carbon dioxide, while again carbon dioxide is reacting with oxygen to produce carbonate. So there is a sort of migration of carbon dioxide from the cathode to the anode. This introduces pretty interesting uh, aspect at system level or that may be a problem issues or also sometimes an opportunity. Of course, as a product of the reaction, we also have the electrical power that is provided to the external circuit and of heat. In this case, since the technology operates at high temperature, it is very interesting as a, a product because it may be valorized in a cogeneration plant that produce both electricity and heat for any kind of civil or industrial application. Like all fuel cells, also for multi-carbonate fuel cells, we can define Nernst equation. This equation is the one that indicates the OCV, so the um, open circuit voltage, that is a very important parameter to define performance of the technology. In this specific peculiar uh, case, um, not only the concentration of oxygen and of hydrogen play an important role, but also the, both concentration of carbon dioxide at the anode and at the cathode. Result is an OCV that is always an average between low temperature of technologies and high temperature technologies. Regarding current density that is strictly related to uh, the efficiency of the technology, Due to the high lo resistance losses that we may have at high voltage, we usually, at low lo lower voltage, we usually operate um, technology at current density between 100 and 200 milliampere per square centimeters. That corresponds usually to a self voltage in the range of 700, 900 millivolts. And these are some uh, examples of um, current. Uh, of uh, polarization curves, so of uh, voltage function of current density, in which we can see uh, typical current density that uh, can hardly um, achieve values higher than 300 
um, really ampere for square centimeters. But we can also see that this technology was developed and used also had high pressure. Was, this was the, one of the first ones that uh, was um, operated at high pressure that, as we can see from these uh, curves, allows to reach higher performances. Here again, we can see what is the typical current density and how the increase of uh, current of pressure from uh, three atmosphere, for example, up to 10 atmospheres, uh, drive to a pretty good increase of, uh, of uh, performances. As the same also as carbon dioxide concentration at the cathode side allows to increase, strongly increase the performance of the cell. So it's really uh, interesting to uh, provide the technology uh, following an uh, indication of high pressure and high carbon dioxide concentration to achieve higher performances. This, of course, has a drawback at system level because it makes a more complex system design. In general, increasing partial pressure, we have a, a performance uh, improvement due to the increase of partial pressure of the reactant itself and we uh, have uh, an improvement of gross solubility in the electrodes and in the electrolytes, and we can uh, improve mass transport rate. Also, a peculiarity of this technology from the uh, basic point of view is the uh, fact that we have at the um, cathode both oxygen and carbon dioxide that react. So we usually define for all the technology um, what is a utilization of oxygen, so a ratio between the amount of oxygen that is reacting in the cell uh, compared to the amount of oxygen that we introduce in the cell. At the same way, we can define for this technology a similar parameter related to carbon dioxide. In this case, we can uh, identify with the equilibrium of the reaction the amount of carbon dioxide that reacts strongly, directly related to the electricity provided by the system, by the fuel cell, and we can define a utilization of carbon dioxide. And this is an additional parameter peculiar of this technology that uh, is, uh, plays an important role on the performances of the technology. Thank you.